Just because we're Indeed, <laughs> you should want to partner with us for no cost. I Top mean, tier. They, they've lost the script. They don't know what they're doing. It's more spaghetti at the wall. They have a few yeah. hits, but mostly misses. None of this really makes sense to me. I mean, what are your thoughts? Well, well, first off, I mean, you, the job site, get top tier talent aka send your job seeker directly to indeed for no compensation no compensation and then they force the job seeker to register meaning you just handed over traffic and a job seeker registration for fucking free yeah so if you're currently receiving compensation from indeed how long do you think it's going to last that's the big question Hide your, your kids. kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous, dangerous podcast. podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right, right where it hurts. hurts. Complete, Complete with breaking news, rash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Just two guys who once got busy in a Burger King bathroom, but not with each other. Hi, kids. You're hey, listening wow. to the Chad and Cheese Podcast. I'm your co-host, Joel Non-Compete Cheeseman. And this is Chad, the fuckery continues so wash. And on this episode, Baby Got Backy, Zip Recruiter Killed the Radio Star, and Amazon Says the Quiet Part Out Loud. Let's do this. <laughs> Hospitality is the heart of our society. It brings people together to share great food, drinks, and experiences. But successfully managing a restaurant or hotel is no easy feat. That's where Harry comes in. Harry is the frontline employee experience platform that helps you build, manage, and engage great teams. With Harry, managers can easily find and hire top talent, manage timekeeping, and communicate with employees at any time from any place. Candidates and team members can quickly and efficiently apply for jobs, swap shifts, and access important information entirely from their mobile devices. And Harry's robust employee engagement tools make team members feel more connected than ever. With Harry, as an owner or operator, you get a bird's eye view of your business. From turnover cost, labor cost, employee sentiment, compliance risk, and team performance. Run your business better by understanding the power of your people. Because when your team is the heart of your business, Harry is the heartbeat. See how it transforms your business. Oh, oh I need some little little John right about now. Huh? Huh? Little uh, John. Oh, the, the oh, DNC. Yeah. I, so you are are you, you're you're in bed when this thing is on live. Are you watching yeah, highlights? Yeah. Are you recording it? All yeah, no, I mean we, we, we can stream and, and they do replays and whatnot. So yeah, I, you get to mm-hmm. see it in the morning. Plus, I mean, you can see all the, it's kind of like watching football, right? I mean, there are chunks that you want to see and then there are chunks that you don't. Uh, But yeah, so far seeing Lil Jon, Oprah, Michelle Obama, Barack Obama, Wes Moore, Pete Buttigieg. And last night, last night, Coach Tim Walls closed the show. My favorite part, Mm -hmm. try not to tear up here, um, of the entire show, not just last night, but the entire show. Yeah. Uh, was uh, when Tim Walsh was giving his pep talk and his son Gus mm-hmm. saw his dad on stage. Uh, he teared up, had tears in his eyes and was pointing at his dad and was looking out around everybody and was like, that's my dad. And that to me is everything. I mean, you see how Doug looks at Kamala, how Gwen looks at Tim, his wife, or, mm-hmm. uh, Tim's wife. Um, and then how's kids react, right? It, it's been a very, very long time since we've been able to see real people like us, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, Biden's 80. I mean, he's a grandpa, for goodness sakes. I mean, we, we just, it, it's hard to relate to something like that. So you get to see real people and Donald Trump. I mean, he's about as fucking plastic and all of his family is about as plastic as you can get. So, and I don't have an escalator in my house. So, you know, it's just, I mean, it's, you can see people that you can relate to and, and that's pretty cool. Uh, hey. Listener, listener, hey, it, I'm seeing here that you're you're watching every single week. Yeah, I know YouTube, Google, they have these analytics things and you haven't subscribed yet. I don't know what the problem is. Hopefully it's probably Joel. I know it's probably Joel, but it's okay. It's okay. He's not here right now. Just go ahead and click subscribe. Click subscribe. He said escalated. That escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> did you say you did tear up or you got a little choked up? No, I, I do. I teared up. I, one of the wow. things that gets me are kids wow. and old people. 
kids and old people, right? Those are people you don't fuck with. Those are people that you always care about. And uh, yeah, his kid, his, his kid literally teared up. He did the Tim Walsh pumping his kind of like uh, his chest thing, um, yep. tapping his chest and was pointing at his dad. And he was like, he was just that was incredibly proud moment for uh, a son. And then obviously hope his, his daughter and well, wife. Uh, went. Dear, dear listener, uh, I've known Chad a long time. If something gets him sort of teared up, it, it's impactful. <laughs> I got to tell you. Uh, my- Ju- Julie said, I... I love this moment so much. I'm like, I know it's amazing. Gus is awesome. She's like, no, I'm talking about you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Get the camera out. Uh, yeah. Um, my, my wife, as you know, is a card carrying Canadian liberal. Uh, so I've yeah, been, yeah. I've been uh, privy to Forced. what's been going on. My favorite part, <laughs> the roll, the roll call is, is fun. Yeah. Uh, so when Indiana comes up, they rock some Michael Jackson, which may be controversial mm-hmm. for some people. I was thinking Mellencamp or something like that might come on. But anyway, the Michael mm-hmm. Jackson, mm-hmm. Uh, Mellencamp's nice, but it's hard to dance to. And then they had Sean Astin, actor, who was Rudy uh, yep. in the movie Rudy, Notre Dame football. Everyone starts chanting Rudy. Like, that was one of my my favorite parts. The other thing is, maybe I'm nostalgic for the 90s, uh, as mm-hmm. I think you are as well. Oh, but of course. Um, oh, yeah. In, enjoy Bill Clinton while you can. Uh, because yes. you know, he even said oh. like, I don't know how many more of these I got left in me. Yeah. He's pretty shaky. Um, so just enjoy bill. If you like bill, uh, for, for as long as you can. And James Carville, <laughs> dude, <laughs> I mean, I hated him in the nineties, but now I'm just like, yeah. this dude's hilarious. Yeah. And he's, he he's, he's, he he's old and grumpy and he just tells mm-hmm. it like it is. I don't understand the Doritos thing. When he just ate Doritos on the screen, do you know what he was? What that was about? <laughs> I I don't know. I didn't yeah, see. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I didn't see. I didn't see. Yeah, he does cra- like you know seeing Biden's poll numbers is like seeing your grandma naked. You can't unsee it. You know he says shit like that, and it's just <laughs> it's just really funny, funny and, and awesome. Um, so I went to the movies this week. Uh, took the kids okay. to see the new Alien. Oh, which is which is horrible. Romulus was it Rom- Romulus? Romulus sucks. Okay, I won't. Okay. just for me. I won't ruin it. No spoilers, but okay. it's you Please, have to yes. leave your brain at the door. I oh, like a okay. movie that's a little more intelligent. So yeah, yeah, just the the special effects are better than than the Cameron movie from the eighties. But other than that, it's it's a bad movie. Anyway, what stood out was in the in the the moment before the movie where you see the commercials. Mm-hmm. It's usually like drink Pepsi or yeah. you know sign up for uh for Mint Mint Mobile whatever. There was a commercial for Monster. Oh, before Jesus. the movie and a commercial for indeed so i thought that was like really uh really wow. interesting apparently indeed has like a Book short ends. film that it, they've produced um maybe i'll look at that and comment it uh comment out next week but they are in the content creation business and promoting it uh during during movies like alien so so there wow you, there you, you go. should definitely you should definitely send that to me i want to take a look at that let's go ahead and jump into to, to shout outs shout out um, I, my first shout out is going to be the future of entertainment and kids. If you're watching mm. on, uh, if you're watching on the TikToks, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to play this bad boy. All right, Joel. So shout out to immersive tech without the goggles, uh, for the, the listeners that are out there, Joel, what do you, what are you seeing here? What are you seeing here? Well, it's an immersive experience, I would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's yes. pretty limited seating. I, I would imagine this in like a Vegas uh, hotel mm-hmm. where you're sitting, enjoying luxurious food, hot you know, hot dogs that aren't your typical hot dog, and you're immersed in the stadium yeah. of the sporting event. In this case, we're watching uh, European football, and it looks like you're in the stadium, yeah. and these people are cheering. Like with they're in the, the stadium. people on the video, like yes. they're part of the the crowd. Yes. Um, it's yes. very sphere like if you've been to the sphere in Vegas. I don't know if you know where this is uh, or where I can get this experience, but it's it's very cool for sure. I, I believe it is in California. Uh, mm-hmm. It's I mean, when we went to the sphere in Vegas to see you mm-hmm. two and then we went to see Postcard from Earth, the, the movie that they have there. 
Um, I said that this tech kills VR because you can have these amazing experiences with real people, not metaverse avatars. Um, and, and this is, this is, this is what I was talking about, right? This sphere yeah. is fucking huge. I mean, it's mm -hmm. 1800 people or something like that. I mean, it's huge. I, I can't remember how the, the seating of it, but it is humongous. I think it was 18,000 maybe. I don't know. Anyway, yep. Yep. it's big. This is much smaller. It's a, it's a fraction of that, but it's just as immersive. And you could see, uh, obviously sports here. This was in a man yeah. you, um, uh, arena. And then yeah. also you could go to see you too. I mean, it, all these different things, man, just so fucking cool. Uh, so shout out to immersive technology without the goggles, without the yeah. goggles. The, the question is, can they can they capture the misery of being a Cleveland Browns fan and being at a oh, Cleveland yeah. Browns game uh, I like, bet it is, they can. like it is in person? <laughs> I bet I bet they can. I can listen to it on the radio and be just as miserable as if I'm there. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how uh, VR isn't happening like people thought it would. But this whole yeah. like go to yeah. go to a thing, have really good food, comfortable seats and feel like you're there. Yeah is yeah. happening so in a in a roundabout way i guess vr is is happening so my my first shout out goes to uh one of my faves chick-fil-a Chick that's right chick-fil-a <laughs> is launching its first elevated drive through uh drive drive through it's uh, launching in georgia uh what the hell is an elevated drive through you might ask chad know. well yeah, think of I like a, a quick oil change place where you okay. take multiple cars uh in this case the kitchen is on top there's a little conveyor belt that delivers your chicken sandwich uh, to to your door. Uh, the new design will service two to three times more vehicles. Uh, wow. One lane will be specifically dedicated to just mobile orders that you can pick up. There's no dining nice. room. There's no playground. Uh, just God's chicken as quickly in your pie hole as possible. Shout out <laughs> to Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A? And it's coming from above as well, right? As so, I mean, should. it is. Yes. <laughs> yes. Chicken from above on a conveyor belt, like Trump coming down on the escalator. God's chicken. That's right, baby. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, you just ruined it. You just ruined it. Anyway. Oh, okay. The next one. Next one comes as a shout out to Sean Fain. We're, we're finally getting leaders mm -hmm. fighting for American workers. I, you got to check this out. Here we go. It's the latest employees, dealers, and customers deserve to know what's up. Sales are down. Profits are down. And CEO pay is way, way up. Problem what? The market. At GM and Ford, auto sales are up. And the problem isn't the auto workers. The problem is this man, Carlos Tavares. Name Carlos and names. Tavares is the CEO of Stellantis. Fact. Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares made $39.5 million last year. Damn. After giving himself and none of it's going to haircuts. That's for sure. Fact. For years. Stellantis has sold fewer cars, but made more in profits. What does that tell you? They're price gouging. Now they've gone too far, and they're tanking their own sales. Fact, Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares is trying to go back on commitments the company made in our last contract. All righty. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. So this was produced by the UAW, I assume. Oh, yeah. They're, they're like yeah, in yeah, the yeah. content game and, and name and names on video. Uh, Jimmy Hoffa uh, somewhere is is cheering in his grave. If, if Hoffa had had this technology, uh, good God. Jesus. Yeah. I To me, though, I mean, we've been talking about it on the show for a while. Mm -hmm. We've been calling out. I mean, obviously, we're a much smaller stage than, you know, Sean Fain has. <laughs> um, but at, at the end of the day, this is what's going on, kids. American workers haven't been getting paid for over 40 fucking years. And this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. CEOs are milking the profits. Pro the profit margins are much larger. And then we're bitching about inflation. It's not fucking affla inflation. These assholes are, ha they've got bigger profit margins. They're doing stock buybacks. And finally, finally, we've got Sean Fain, who is calling these guys out. And we do have also Joe Biden, Kamala, uh, Tim Walls, I'm sure is going to get on board with this. We finally have leaders who are starting to say what 
the the problem is. Mm-hmm. Shout out so, to Sean Fain. So clearly on the DNC, you saw Fain uh, take the stage with the Trump is a scab T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> that was, yes. That's ballsy, man. I mean, if uh, Trump gets in, ugh, that's that's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Well, my shout out goes to some big money in the podcasting world. That's Ooh. right. Uh, Alex Ooh. Cooper. No, she's not related to Alice Cooper, although she has the no. male name, I guess, and he has the the traditionally women's name anyway alice cooper is the host of a podcast called call her daddy uh i don't know if you've uh, heard it before uh four million followers four million followers listen to uh listen to this podcast it's sort of a nice it's sort of a sports talk radio with with women you know they talk about vaginas and how to satisfy women and i guess you know they it's it's a fringe kind of out of the box podcast Okay. I didn't mean to say box as a joke, but anyway, uh, so <laughs> Sirius, and I was surprised yes. that Sirius is still in business, but Sirius uh, is paying them a hundred million dollars over three years, similar to the Joe Rogan deal. They'll have yeah. exclusive rights to sell the advertising uh, on the show, and uh-huh. uh, it's just nice. I, I I dream of our payday coming soon, although I don't think it's going to be to the tune of a hundred million dollars over over three years. But a boy can dream. And shout out to Alex Cooper. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Well, you know what? Alex Cooper is probably, I don't know, she might be giving away free stuff like like Chad and Cheese, like Chad and Cheese, she might be. Mm-hmm. Um, like t-shirts from Aaron App. We, we actually saw uh, Krista from ATAP this week with the Chad Cheese t-shirt on. Mm-hmm. She says it's lovely. It feels good on the skin. Of course it does. Did you know uh, she's from- Canadian, Chad? Did you know? Of course. She's Don't Canadian. Of course. Yeah. In case you didn't and, know. Yeah. She's incredibly nice too. Uh, <laughs> t-shirts from Aaron App. We have beer. That's right. Craft beer yeah. delivered to your doorstep from Aspen Tech Labs. That's our kids over at Aspen Tech Labs. Whiskey from Text Kernel, two bottles of whiskey from Text Kernel, uh, and or let's call them Bullhorn. Mm-hmm. And if it is your birthday, it's oh, a little yeah. rum with plum. You got to go to chadcheese.com slash free to register. I know oh, yeah. I can. I love the free I stuff. All the way down in my plum. That's right, Chad. Some listeners are celebrating another trip around the sun. Shout out to Sean Kelleher, Bradley Clark, again, another Canadian. Hey, Bob, we were doing our movie. Don't wreck our show, you <laughs> That's right. Andrea Wade, uh, Nick Livingston, Trisha Lee Lanane, someone close to your heart, uh, Amon Brar, Dina Funky Cold Medeiros, Joey Stubbs, Joe Stubblebine celebrates a birthday. Mm-hmm. And last but not least, Dr. Christine Picard Cheeseman oh, celebrates a birthday this week. Happy birthday, Happy birthday everybody, to nice. our loyal listeners. Excellent. Are we going to be able to see Dr. Picard down in Nashville September 12th and 13th? That's a no. Okay. No. Sorry about that. Uh, we are going to be in the Shaker Recruitment Marketing Green Room at Wreckfest <laughs> in right. Nashville. Uh huh. Right Two days, two days. We've got a lot of interviews going on, a lot of beer to drink, a lot of how to be uh, barbecue, hopefully, to eat as well. Uh, it's we're also Nashville going to be- hot chicken. It's not barbecue. You, you're going to get the Nashville hot chicken. <laughs> I'm going to get the barbecue. Uh, we're also going to be hosting a VIP event with great people, higher clicks, and job pixel at the end of the day. One at Redneck Riviera. Uh, more info. It, as it gets closer and on our LinkedIn, all you have to do is go to uh, Chad's LinkedIn, uh, Joel, if he, if he has it and shared my post, you can go ahead and click through and get yourself into the queue for a VIP registration. But remember, you can't enjoy RecFest unless you're at RecFest. Go to chadcheese.com slash events, click on the register and have at it, kids. Have at it. Hope to see you there. That's right. That's right. And if you're headed to Tennessee, there's a team called the Titans that play football. Oh, yes. And there are some members of the Titans that are in fantasy football. And if you love fantasy football like Chad and Cheese does, you got to get in the game to be registered Ooh. to play fantasy Factory football. Fix. Season Ooh. number four, season wow. number three, sponsored by our friends at Factory Fix. Draft day is September 4th, so there's still plenty of time to get your name in the hat, but you got to go to chadcheese.com, click the link, submit your name, 
and you might win the greatest experience of your life. Who knows? Uh, who knows? A and Dina Perro is looking to repeat. She's talking a lot of shit online. Uh, so if you, <laughs> I love if you don't, it. If you don't like the attitude, you got to play yeah. to put her back yeah. in her place. But yeah, it's uh, one it. of my favorite events of the year, fantasy football with Chad and Cheese sponsored by Factory Fix. Yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to be mad drafting cuz I'm going to be back in uh, Indiana then. <laughs> oh, will you be in person? <laughs> nice. Yeah, you've uh, you've auto drafted for at least 2 years in a row, I think. Uh yeah, no I have. I have. So uh this year I I won't have any fucking excuses. He's back, <laughs> baby. <laughs> hey, Jabix. Oh, boy. X is in the news again, Chad. Imagine that. Uh, well, Chris <laughs> yeah. Bakke, former CEO of Lasky, Elon's first mm -hmm. acquisition at X, has left the building after just one year at X. In case you missed it, Lasky, the company, touted itself as, quote, the most powerful platform to hire tech talent, end quote. In a farewell post, Backey said X hiring, quote, has quietly amassed over 1 million active jobs from top employers and will be used by millions of people each month to find jobs, end quote. For context, Indeed claims 350 million unique monthly visitors compared to 1 million at X. Anyway, Chad, what are your thoughts on Backey backing it out of X hiring? Yeah, I, I think he, he got high on his own supply for too long. Like, let's go ahead and, and take a look at what's been happening at uh, Twitter slash X. OK, so Elon bought Twitter in October of 2022 for forty four billion dollars in November of 2023. Fidelity and their valuation dropped it to twelve point five billion from forty four to twelve point five. Why? Well, big name advisors as Walmart. IBM, NBC Universal left the site over concerns about hate speech on the platform, to which Musk responded during an interview by telling advertisers, well, go fuck yourself. Advertisers spent $744 million on Twitter during the first six months of 2024, about 24% less than that of 2023. According to Media Radar, they were already spending less money in 2023, and now they're down 20, 23, 23, or 24%. Just last week, uh, it has been reported that loan, or loans that Elon Musk used to buy Twitter uh, have become the worst merger finance deal for banks since the financial crisis in 2008 and 2009. And now this... Rats are leaving the ship, canary in the coal mine, whatever idiom you'd like to use, mm -hmm. thinking that Twitter will be a hiring superpower, let alone a fucking super app, is just absurd at this point. I mean, Linda Yaccarino is recording videos that make her look like fucking Stockholm syndrome, for fuck's sake. To me, this is the biggest ball of chaos. I, I can see why Chris left, okay? I, again, he's this is not his first exit. Um, he's obviously very talented. He's gotten companies like uh, Indeed and also X uh, to buy. Mm -hmm. uh, good for him. But man, this ship is sinking and the rats are jumping off. You're not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe? <laughs> so, yeah, Bak Baki is a startup and sell machine. Uh, yeah. You mentioned Indeed bought his company, interviewed uh, Zillow has bought one of his companies and, and, yeah. and then X, uh, in his post, he mentioned like, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do now. My guess is his bank account says, yeah, he can do whatever the hell that he wants, uh, right about now. Just get I'm me sure the fuck signed, out of here. I'm sure he signed yeah. a year contract to stick around at Twitter. That was about a year ago. Shocker. Uh, the guy's headed, headed on his way out now that he has some free time. Maybe he can jump on the mic with us and uh, we can talk shop about what's really going on at X hiring and, and why we should care. Um, X hiring launched about a year ago. I think it was November of, of 2023. And in about a year's time, they've basically managed to launch a job board that most of us can buy out of the box uh, for $29 a month. Way to In go, guys. Weeks. Way to go. Uh, <laughs> look, where's the LinkedIn competitor we were promised, right? Where's 
where's the one click apply that takes data from my my Twitter account and and applies to jobs? I still got to go through ATSs uh-huh. and multiple pages. Okay. Where's matching? Uh, X is supposed to know more about me than m- any job board, right? Kind of knows preferences where I like. It, nah. it sucks. There, the matching nah. sucks. Where's Where's resume search? Uh, oh, I can't <laughs> post a resume really. Oh wait, I can, but I got to dig pretty deep into my edit profile to like put my work history. So they're not promoting it. Uh, Maybe it's a test yeah. thing. I don't know. Maybe the stuff is coming. But as far as I'm concerned. After a year of this thing, a lot of hype, a lot of Elon talking shit about we're going to blow the lid off of LinkedIn. I see a whole lot of nothing. And I think Backy's exit tells you what you need to know and that there's nothing going on. Because if there was something exciting, he might have stuck around to see it come to fruition. But I think he sees a dead end. I think he sees not a whole lot of anything. There's not a whole lot of meatloaf in this story chat. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i got i got nothing a lot yeah, of nothing burger I, I, as i think we've talked about watching facebook google all of these big names get into our space they just don't understand the space they have no fucking clue and i mean chris he was able to sell lasky uh, again which is a third rate fucking matching platform for mm-hmm. god's sakes good for him i mean good for him uh, but i doubt he's going to come on chad and cheese because if he says anything bad about elon I mean, there, he has, Elon has way too many attorneys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he, he hasn't sold enough com- of his companies to fight a legal no. battle, um, no. against, against Elon. Uh, he's a, he's mm-hmm. a fun Twitter follow though, by the way, if you're still on Twitter, I know Chad, you've pretty much yeah. left it, but, but he is yeah. a pretty entertaining, uh, tweeter or Xer, whatever we're tweeter. calling it. Uh, Xer. You don't mess up, Aaron! <laughs> Well, you All got right, some news out of Indeed, in. Chad. Let's do this. Yeah, let's jump into the next one. So we've seen Indeed's traffic waning, revenues waning, new business models like CPA and CPSA waning, and then employed, uh, imploding. Uh, then we hear about Indeed Flex marching into temp staffing. Then Indeed announces charging for API calls at three bucks a clip. And now, wait a minute, and now the following excerpt of an email comes from Eric Epling, Strategic Partnership Manager at Indeed. Uh, And it was sent to us from a niche job board. Quote, Eric asks, would you, the job site, they're actually asking the job site, be open to a content for traffic exchange? This would mean that we, Indeed, may not be able to compensate you, but your job site would benefit from top tier jobs while we receive traffic from your platform. Also, please note that our strategy now focuses on, get ready kids, healthcare, tech, financing and accounting, and transportation jobs, end quote. What do you think about this, Joel? Sound a little fishy? So a little little history lesson, kids, because I know that's what you come to the show for. <laughs> uh, outside of SEO, Indeed's backfill model was really, really what ramped up the company to a different stratosphere. Uh, there was a yeah. time when pretty much any job board had Indeed backfill. There were very few that didn't. They were the only one that really offered it. You got paid on a click. Uh, it, it gave you content where you didn't have content before. I knew job boards that fired their whole sales and marketing staff because they could just supply jobs through Indeed. And a big, big problem with job boards is like, we need jobs, we need employers. Well, in, Indeed came along and said, Hey, you don't need job, you know, you don't need postings. Like you can get them from us. And by the yeah, way, this supply. was a really nice, uh, Trojan horse where everyone that put backfill had a little link at the bottom that said jobs provided by indeed or whatever. And that Mm -hmm. jobs link, Mm -hmm. guess what was, was hot linked back to indeed.com. Well, Google loves backlinks. So basically indeed, I won't say tricked, but they leveraged all these backfill relationships to get better search rankings, which ultimately Mm -hmm. like tanked every job board that had, had uh, enjoyed SEO rankings in the past. It was very successful. I'm sure it was a pain to manage. There was probably click fraud. Uh, and fast forward to today, you have competition from the likes of Pando, Talru, every programmatic solution out there. Mm-hmm. And they kind of ended it as far we talked about it. Um, but then they then they launched these channels 
healthcare tech and it's basically like a way to to call their the call their customers it's like hey hey hospital regional hospital in in Toledo <laughs> like we have a new healthcare channel you need to spend more money with us because we have these great partnerships and now they want you to partner without money as if as if they have uh-huh. content that can't be gotten anywhere else like just exactly. cuz we're in just cuz we're indeed <laughs> you should want to partner with us for no cost I Top mean, they, they've lost the script. They don't know what they're doing. It's more spaghetti at the wall. They have a few yeah. hits, but mostly misses. None of this really makes sense to me. I mean, what are your thoughts? Well, well, first off, I mean, you, the job site, get top tier talent aka send your job seeker directly to indeed for no compensation. No compensation. And then they force the job seeker to register, meaning you just handed over traffic and a job seeker registration for fucking free. So if you're currently receiving compensation from Indeed, how long do you think it's going to last? That's the big question. Also, even if you are selling clicks to Indeed, they're paying you to siphon your job seekers and build their database, right? Back to the quote, only focusing on partnering with healthcare, tech, finance and accounting, and transportation jobs. Siphoning job seekers from niche job sites are the key. Now, we've talked about this on the show for years. Job sites that are experts in specific spaces, they are much more valuable. In this case, Indeed sees that. They see your model. They understand your model, and they want to siphon it dry. They want to drink your fucking milkshake, kids. So at the end of the day, Back in the day, Monster, Crew Builder, Indeed, the general job sites ruled the world. Now Indeed sees that's not the case, right? Mm -hmm. So all of those those organizations, those, those niche job sites, companies understand that quality is better than quantity. The market has shifted. The landscape has shifted. And last but not least, if you are a job site, and you need content, there are plenty of places to go to get great great job content. And if you're not sure where, message me on LinkedIn. I will hook you up with some great contacts to be able to get you great top tier content so you don't have to play this bullshit game with Indeed. Chad Sowash will make sure you do not fall for the banana banana in the the tailpipe. (laughs) Oh, indeed. Oh, indeed. I'll tell you. All right, let's take a quick break. And rip into ZipRecruiter. What do you say? Chad, our friends at ZipRecruiter, <laughs> they've launched a new podcast called Talent All-Stars, hosted by company president David Travers. The podcast aims to provide insights into effective HR storytelling and leadership in business. New episodes will be available every Tuesday, mark your calendars, with both audio and video formats accessible on major podcast platforms like YouTube. We lost Serge and Shelley and gained ZipRecruiter. Not a fair trade, if you ask me. Chad, what are your thoughts on no. ZipRecruiter getting into podcasting? So at one point, ZipRecruiter was the biggest spender on podcasts in the world, <laughs> kid. Yep. ZipRecruiters, stock is down. They aren't doing as well as they were in 2019. So instead of buying time on podcasts, well, why don't we start our own? I find this funny because back in 2019, when we were doing this thing for about two years, um, ZipRecruiter approached us and said that they would like to sponsor this show, the Friday show, but Mm -hmm. it would have to be exclusive. Now, the idea was smart, but there was no way in hell that we were going to tell our loyal sponsors to take a fucking hike. That's not happening. Mm -hmm. But the idea... Don't start from scratch. Align yourself with already established podcast and known voices. That makes sense. We now have over 1,300 audio episodes, 83 full uh, episodes on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, kids, go subscribe. Uh, And over 300 total videos on YouTube, including shorts. 
ZipRecruiter is starting from ground zero and their president is the voice of the podcast. Really? If I'm a board member, I'm asking, why isn't Dave, the president of ZipRecruiter, focused on executing better go to market, better product, shaking hands and kissing babies? I mean, at least comb your fucking hair when you get on camera, Dave. Jesus. What's it? At the end of the day, because we all know that, you know, obviously Surgeon Shelley last, lasted four years. That's a hell of a run. How long do you think this one's going to last? I can't believe you dissed someone for their hair. That's good. That's irony, my friend. Um, oh, dude, this is the best. <laughs> Quick side note. Uh, my son, Cole, 17, uh, his birthday's coming up. He's asked for one of these shavers of his head. Like, uh -huh. he's gone from 80s death metal hair to, like, yeah. high and tight to bald. I don't know what's going on with my teenage son. Anyway, side note. Sorry, I digress. Um, <laughs> I'm with you, man. I mean, they spend enough on podcasts. They may as well just launch their own and, and hope for the best. Uh, let's go back in history again, uh, like we did with Indeed and SEO. Uh, there was a time when blogs were cool, man. Blog everyone, if oh, you yeah. were blogging, man, you were you were on the cutting edge of cool. And after yeah. a few years, what happened? Company said, "We need a blog. We need to like put out some shit, get some SEO, get some traffic." Turns out. Every company mm -hmm. blog, 99.9% .9 of every company blog sucked. It was like this Sucks. this cleansed uh, vanilla, like hopefully Google will give us some love traffic and some mm -hmm. still do it. I mean, it still gets traffic, but if, if you go there for entertainment and if you think there's going to be a ton of comments and engagement, like you're going to the wrong place. So this is going to, in my estimation, have a similar run. You're going to have companies say like, oh, podcasts are huge. They're getting $100 million from Sirius and, and Spotify. Like we need to have a podcast. On one hand, it's a little bit smart because it's a good idea if you do launch a podcast to feature your customers or people that you want to be a customer. So when you look at the names yeah. that are in this podcast, you know, eBay and, and some of that, my guess is they're all, they're all already uh zip recruiter customers. So they're making them feel good. Probably. NBC universal Nike was on there as well. But the point, like you're very right. Like this is a 20 minute sort of really vanilla interview. He's probably reading from a script. There's not a whole lot of sexy. There's no, there's no entertainment value sucks. I mean, these folks oh, yeah. are giving really vanilla answers. PR is probably uh, approving every question that they're getting. They're probably every. I mean, like there's there's nothing exciting about this podcast. And and as of Wednesday, uh, when I wrote up notes for the show, they only had mm -hmm. five ratings on Apple Podcasts. I don't know what they have on Google and other places. I'm guessing it's not much different. I mean, they have over a thousand employees. You mean you couldn't send a group <laughs> message to everybody and say, hey, we have a new podcast. If you guys could go out there and like give us a review, we'd really love it. Five ratings and none of them are even comments. It's just like click the star. No one's no one's commenting at all on it. And this is a this is a big company. This is a public company. Yeah. And they put yeah. it like so that shows you how little interest there is in what they're doing. It's probably going to be six months to a year when they look at, oh, no one's listening to this. We're out of customers to highlight uh, let's just like let it uh, weather on the vine, just like blogs, company podcasts are, are gonna suck and do suck, uh, and they should they should uh, they shouldn't have done this. And companies out there that look into this to do this, like don't. It's just a bad idea. It's just a bad idea. Yeah, and they're wasting their president's time. Number one, hey, this just demonstrates that these motherfuckers don't do anything in the first place. Number one. Number two. If you are a company and you want to do something in podcasting or in video podcasting or something of that nature, go to where the people are already. Don't start from ground zero. That's fucking stupid. Go to where the people are. Do special uh, projects with those, the, the, those individuals. That is how you actually do it. Then it's on the actual influencers or the podcasters or whomever it is to get the content pulled together right? It's what they do. Yeah. It's not what you do. It's not what you do. You should be doing running a fucking company, right? Anyway, yeah. enough ranting. Stop doing stupid shit. You spent a bunch of money on, a, on fucking podcasts over the years. You're not going to be able to create your own. 
Yeah. Yeah. Get some people to do it for you. Get Surgeon Shelley are retired. Get them out of retirement. Write them a check. Yeah. Uh, pay them in loonies or maple syrup or whatever they want. <laughs> and uh, and they'll, they'll do a hell of a lot better job uh, than what you're doing. This, than you, this, easily. Yeah. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. All right, Chad. Uh, let's go to Amazon. It can't get any worse, right? Uh, Amazon said the quiet part out loud. Amazing. Uh, imagine that. Their head of AWS told employees that most developers could stop coding as AI takes over in a leaked document obtained by Business Insider. An AWS spokesperson clarified, saying the vision was about enhancing developers' capabilities to focus on innovative work rather than signaling a reduction in their roles. Wink, wink. <laughs> but, the ch- but the damage may have already be d- been done. Chad, what are your thoughts on saying the quiet part out loud at AWS? Yeah, it's like second week in a row this has happened. Fucking Steve Schmidt at Google said stupid shit. Uh, and then it was like, oh, I, I didn't Schmidt. mean that. Or, yeah, that's it, Eric. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Eric, you did mean it. Yes, you did. Now you're just trying to cover your tracks. Same thing here. But I've said it before and I'll say it again. The co-pilots that companies are equipping you with as helpers Mm -hmm. are replacements. Yes, you are training the AI. You are training your replacement. Now, Mm -hmm. when it comes to recruiting, it's different. And here's why why it's different. There's so much administrative bullshit that we've been doing for years that should be automated. <laughs> my my Google. That's your co pilot. That's my that's my co pilot. <laughs> Fuck it. Anyway, uh there's so much administrative bullshit that we've been doing over the years that should be automated, like interview scheduling, uh knockout questions, and maybe the first interview, if there's you know more than one in the process. But then there are parts of the job which are human, ones that include human interaction, because for the most part, the people we hire will have to interact with humans. So we need to be able to assess interaction. Plus, doesn't the candidate deserve a human touch? Yes. Use tech to do the stupid stuff. Make your recruiters and candidates happier. And last but not least, get rid of the fucking black hole. So when it comes to talent management, shit, man, there are so many damn gaps that could be closed with tech um, with internal mobility alone which would also help upward mobility, retention, higher product productivity, all leading to higher revenues. Plus, let's just let's just say it. It's Amazon. Are we really surprised that they want to get the humans out of their entire fucking organization? Well, they're out of humans to hire. So yes, they do have to have uh a good point. AI replace 60% some of, the of the time it works every time. When People are in a position of power and have enough money to not give a shit about what they say. Sometimes the truth falls out. And when it does, you should listen. Um, the, the discussions that are happening in the C-suite of pretty much every ma- you know major company or company that matters, this is what they're talking about. How do we eliminate more people? How do we reduce our headcount? How do we reduce our overhead? Because that's what our shareholders want. That's what most CEOs are compensated for in stock. Mm -hmm. Uh, So there's a huge incentive to have fewer people. And I think that downward pressure um, is real. If you are in a position that can be replaced by AI, augmented by AI, changed by AI in some way, you should be smart and think ahead. And how can I take my current position or my skills and not be replaced by AI because it, this shit's coming. Um, yeah. and if, if it's, if it's not coming for everyone, if, if it repl- if it takes a junior level developer and makes them into a senior level developer because of it made them smarter then you as the senior level developer are in trouble because you can't get any better. And if they're paying them 50% less, guess who's going to get that job or keep that job. So yeah. you need to be really smart about this. At the end of the day, there are going to be fewer customer service reps. There are going to be fewer burger flippers. There are going to be fewer marketing pros and content creators. And yes, the good recruiters and HR people will find a way to survive. They will adapt. They will survive the meteor crash and figure out a way to survive. But there's no way around it. There are going to be fewer jobs for these knowledge-based workers. And don't take my word for it. 
This is the head of AWS. This is a major multi-billion dollar company saying you this in a company meeting that was leaked to the press. This is real, not just knucklehead uh, in his in his home office. You need to pay attention to this stuff because it's happening. And these important people are saying it. There you go. There you go. Be there alert, go. people. Be alert because at the end of the day. So you get nothing. You lose. Good day, Unless you're smart about it. Let's take a quick break and talk about being banned in the USA. Are you looking to boost your job ass performance? And are you looking to empower your recruiters to connect with your candidates at a much deeper level? Well, video is the best way. Collecting authentic video content from your employees, talking about why they love working for your company and why they've been there for X amount of years, absolutely skyrocket your metrics, such as your application rates, improving your SEO, driving more traffic to your career site, and even attracting better candidates that are sick and tired of the good old job ad jargon that they see out there in the world. JobPixel is trusted by some of the top companies in the world, such as Cognizant, US Cellular, Boston Medical Center, Arkansas Children's Hospital, and many more. Reach out to our team today to get a custom business case showing you how to improve your metrics at a level you've never seen before. We can't wait to show you what video can do. Thanks. All right. A federal appeals court has temporarily allowed Indiana's law requiring age verification for viewing pornography online to go into effect. This decision follows a stay on an injunction that had previously blocked the law which is similar to one in, wait for it, Texas. The law requires users to provide ID for age verification, sparking privacy concerns from the adult entertainment industry. Indiana's AG sees it as a win for family protection, while the industry argues it's impractical, you think, and potentially insecure. Chad, what are your thoughts on being banned in the USA if you're a porn site? See, I was so excited about the, the, the po political season. I was happy, and now this shit happens. It is political season. Indiana is a red state, and Republicans love the freedom mm -hmm. to take your freedoms. Healthcare, women's rights, books, now porn? What's next? What's fucking next? Come on, people. Uh, we won't touch age gating social media, but let's ban pornography. Uh, got <laughs> it. Got it. So Indiana, uh, is joining Arkansas. You can probably name the States. I'm going to say Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Montana, South. North Carolina, Utah, Virginia, and of course, uh, Texas. This is mostly window dressing for voters who are saying like, get, you put porn. It's killing our kids. It's ruining everything. Let me tell you something, everybody. There's something called VPN. Uh, that, that <laughs> allows you to be in a different country if you want to be when you access a, yeah. a, a website. And who understands VPN more than the kids, right? Kids more than anything. Nobody. If the you kids. make a 10 foot wall, they're going to, they're going to find an 11 foot ladder. Okay. So yeah. your kids are still going to find porn unless you lock your own system down. But even then they got phones, they got the, like, they're going to find it just like Chad and I had a way of finding Play, Playboy magazines and penthouse back in the day, the dusty yeah. VCR tape, you know, in our our naughty uncle's uh, attic. Like kids will find this shit because they understand uh, uh, understand technology. Pornhub uh, employs around twelve hundred people, uh, and they're about to get more people because now they need lobbyists to go to state governments, local governments, federal governments to start lobbying why they shouldn't. Uh, make porn illegal. And guess what? Politicians are going to have a hell of a time getting lobbied by Pornhub. Trust me, that's a party that everyone uh, wants to go to, <laughs> which, which, which brings us, Chad, you guessed, boonga boonga. It. you guessed it. Our dad joke of the day. Are you ready? Yes. What's the difference between Disney Plus and Pornhub? What's the difference between Disney Plus and and Pornhub. Mickey and Minnie's relationship. Disney wants you to hate your stepmother. What are you doing, <laughs> stepbro? We out. We out. Thank you for listening to what's it called? A podcast. The Chad. The Cheese. Brilliant. They talk about recruiting. They talk about technology. But most of all, they talk about nothing. 
Just a lot of shout-outs of people you don't even know, and yet you're listening. It's incredible. And not one word about cheese. Not one. Cheddar. Blue. Nacho. Pepper Jack. Swiss. There's so many cheeses, and not one word. So weird. Anywho, be sure to subscribe today on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way, you won't miss an episode. And while you're at it, visit www.chatcheese.com. Just don't expect to find any recipes for grilled cheese. It's so weird. We out!